So Ken Hovind finally got released from jail. Yeah, all those people praying for God's will to be done must be what made it happen. We need to pray for Ken Hovind. Yeah. Amen. I said this, folks. Let's just pray for one righteous ju a juror. One righteous juror. That's really really all we need. We know that ultimately it'll be the hand of the Lord that will, de that will deliver him. Well, that would kind of mean it was the Lord's will that Kent Hovind should be locked up in federal prison for the best part of 10 years in the first place. Yeah, for some bizarre reason, when Kent was locked up in jail, he couldn't see the glory of the Lord's plan that required for him to spend about 10 years of his life in prison. I just spent the last nine years in pr federal prison over one of the dumbest laws ever passed in the history of humanity, structuring. So I came across this video by Border Bit. In order to make Africa and South America fit for the Pangea theory they put in the textbooks, they shrank Africa 30 to 5, 35 to 40 percent. They shrank Africa by 35 to 40 percent. Now, I've searched for this quote without success and cannot therefore state whether Hovind read this somewhere, perhaps in his copy of Continental Drift Conspiracy Theories for Creationist Kids, or simply pulled it out of his ass. But if you squish that much tectonics in that brief of a period how, how of time... How much tectonics? What are you trying to do? Are you trying to put Africa and South America together? Is that what you're judging this by? Either that or just produce the mountains that are necessary for your flood no. interpretation. In order to make Africa and South America fit for the Pangea theory they put in the textbooks, they shrank Africa 30 to 5, 35 to 40 percent. And it suddenly occurred to me. You see, whilst Kent Hovind's been locked up, Google Earth's made some great strides to the point where now you can show exactly why Kent is talking crap here. Have you talked to them? I taught her science for 15 years. Get, your, get, any, get any high school textbook, which is what I taught, Measure the size of the continents they show for Pangaea. Get a ratio, and then go measure it on a real globe. And you'll say, wow, how did they do that? I believe the Bible is literally true and scientifically accurate. I believe it in, from cover to cover, every detail. I'm going to guess that the Lord made about as much effort to make sure that his vassal got things correct as he did to keep him out of jail. There was a big flood in the days of Noah that destroyed everything. And that flood explains all the geology of the world. The canyons, the mountain ranges, the ocean basins, the continental shelf. But it sure is one hell of a strange flood that Kent Hovind believes in here. It's a global flood, and you're going to love this, it's a global flood where the ocean levels go down. And they go down far enough that the kangaroos can hop all the way to Australia. Anyway, as far as kangaroos getting to Australia... If you look at a map of the world, you'll see the water between Vietnam and Australia is only like 30, 40 feet deep. If you lower the oceans just 30 or 40 feet, uh, most of the things are connected. Lots of things become connected. The oceans average 12,000 feet deep. So taking out just 1% of the depth, you know, uh, or 10%, you know, 1,000 feet. If the ice caps were larger, like clear down to Kansas City, and obviously they were that large, then the oceans would be smaller. The water would be frozen and stashed at the North and South Pole, meaning for a few hundred years after that big flood in the days of Noah, got my chart back here, right after the flood, I think the ice caps were much larger, making the oceans smaller, and animals could walk any place. The kangaroos could get to Australia by, by hopping or walking, whatever they want to do. Indeed, they go down over a mile such that the Galapagos tortoises can crawl to their new home. Yeah, it's an interesting global flood, this biblical flood, one where the sea levels go down. And um, what's that, Ken? The kangaroos went to Australia because they didn't want to fight with the lions over the territory. I believe after Noah's flood, the less aggressive animals would tend to be always driven away to the edge of what's called the migration wave. You know, rather than fight over their territory with the lions, they would give it up and let the lions have it and move off someplace else. So if that's true, why did the gazelles decide that they were going to hang around in Africa, you muppet? 